Being a part-time student is an excellent way to balance work and college, but what happens when you need financial aid? All scholarships seem to target full-time students, so do you still have chances or are you out of the system? Well, we've got good news. Hi, I'm San Diego from Great Hacker, the non-traditional student number one reader. Finding financial aid is key for anyone who wants to study, and if you're a part-time student, there are a few programs you can consider to get some relief. First of all, we need to talk about the Federal Pell Grant, the best option for students in financial need. And yes, it also applies if you are a part-timer. But of course, you'll need to meet some requirements, like being a US citizen or eligible non-citizen, having a high school diploma or equivalent, and demonstrating financial need following the FAFSA. How much money you'll receive will be equivalent to your enrollment status. This is usually based on the number of great hours or courses you take. Meaning that if you are enrolled half-time, which is usually around 6 to 8 credit hours per semester, you'll qualify to receive half of the maximum Pell Grant amount. For this one, it's important to note that your expected family contribution and the cost of attendance at your institution are key. The lower your EFT, the higher your chances to qualify for a Pell Grant. That's the basics of how they work, but we will leave in the description a link to their official site so you can review them more in depth. Moving on, another great option for part-time students is Federal Work Study Job. The reason is in the name. They help learners access part-time jobs. In other words, they get some time of experience and money to pay for their education. The first thing you need to do is to fill out the FAFSA form to see if you qualify for financial aid. The best part of this program is that you can work on or off campus on jobs that are related to your field of study or that involve community service. So it's like getting paid to learn and help out. Here, the government pays part of your wages, but you have to make at least the minimum wage. The number of hours you can work each week has a limit of 10 to 20 hours, and you'd get paid for each hour you work. You need to keep in mind that your income is still subject to taxes and that to participate in the program, you have to reapply every school year. The factors that determine who enters are financial need and funding available. If you want to learn more, once again, go to this. Now let's talk about federal direct loans offered by the US Department of Education. Just like with the others, and pretty much all programs, you need to complete the FAFSA as how much you receive will depend on your financial need. There are two main types of direct loans. Direct subsidized loans are mainly for undergraduate students in financial need. In this case, the government will cover the interest while you are in school at least half time, during the grace period, and during the farm. The other type is the direct and subsidized loans, which all students can access and aren't need based. Interest begins when the loan is paid out, and students are responsible for paying it while in school or choosing to capitalize on it. Basically, you can access the maximum loan amount depending on your academic year and dependency status. Because this is a loan, the government will set interest rates that may change annually, but the good news is that the repayment process begins after you graduate, leave school, or drop below half type of loan. You may also qualify for loan deferment or forbearance in cases of financial hardship or other eligible circumstances. In other words, during this deferment time, the interest won't pile up. Still, this only applies to subsidized loans. Also, you have to complete entrance counseling before receiving a federal loan to understand loan terms, responsibilities, and repayment options. If you're looking for something different that's not handled by the government, you can look for employer tuition assistance programs. Here, you'll find companies that offer to pay for your tuition or other college expenses. In return, they'll employ you and you'll most likely have to meet specific performance goals or commit to working with them for a few years. After all, they'll expect their investment to be worth. Companies usually offer these programs to those who want to enhance their skills or qualifications, but cannot commit to full-time study either because they can't afford it or don't have the time. To pay for college, employers can reimburse your tuition costs or pay directly to your college. Still, how much depends on the program. Some cover all costs, while others pay for related expenses like textbooks or partial tuition. The main disadvantage is that the courses you can choose are usually limited and ideally would have to be aligned with what you want to study. Plus, you'll be asked to maintain a certain level of academic performance or be tight for years to the company that sponsored you. But ultimately, it depends on your goals, the company, and the career. So if you find an employer assistant program that suits your need, go for it. And the final alternative you can consider is private student loans. What the requirements to apply depend on the lender you choose, can be an individual lender or a financial institution, students usually need to submit personal and financial information, income and expense details, 
and all the codes associated with their education. Another must to access this loan is your credit history and credit scores, which are vital to determining eligibility and ensuring the interest rate. For those with limited or adverse credit histories, securing the loan may require a co-signer with a better credit record. But even then, the loan amount depends on the lender's policies. Interest rates can be either fixed or variable, even though most are usually like this, but may have longer repayment periods. Now you know that financial aid is not exclusive for full-time You can too. You just need to do your research and find the one that suits you best. Still, if you're going for a loan option, we know it can be extremely hard to pick the right choice, so we'll leave you our list of websites to calculate your loan and our tutorial on how to choose them. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.